You are watching this video because you, a family member or loved one, has a diagnosis of cancer. You may be overwhelmed with tests, doctor appointments, treatments, and changes in your life. It can be difficult to take it all in, but it is important that you learn some essential facts about your oral cancer therapy so that you can be a partner in your therapy. For that purpose, we present the following information in this film. Your nurse will add additional information when you are seen in clinic, and we encourage you to ask any questions and let your healthcare team know of any concerns you may have. With this information, we hope that you will have a better understanding of your treatment and what you can do to manage possible side effects. Remember, your healthcare team is here to help you. Oral chemotherapy refers to any drugs that you are taking by mouth to treat cancer. Many of our newer drugs are considered to be given orally. They are in a pill form or capsule form. Oral chemotherapy is, is just as effective as many of the drugs that we give by the intravenous form. We treat many tumor types and it really is dependent on the type of cancer you have. Your physician would meet with you and see if you are a candidate for oral versus IV. It's not necessarily one is better than the other, it's just a matter of what's best for your cancer. Oral cancer therapies are very specialized medications. Some medications must be approved following specific guidelines. Some manufacturers will only send their products through certain pharmacies, which have been trained in dispensing their product. When you're prescribed by your oncologist to be taking an oral cancer therapy, Many insurances may require the drug to be prescribed or dispensed from a specialty pharmacy. These are drugs that have been researched. They are very costly. Your oncology physician or nurse will be asking you about your insurance cards. What is your prescription coverage? These are drugs that are usually mailed to your home. And we give it anywhere from 10 days to up to a month before getting the medication. Call us when you get the medication. These specialty pharmacies, this is pretty much all they do. So not only are you getting representatives from us talking to you, you're gonna get an individual pharmacist from that specialty pharmacy calling you before you get the drugs. Since you will be taking the medication for your cancer on your own at home, you and your family will have more responsibility to take your medication as directed. Since your nurses and doctors are not monitoring you directly at home, it is really important to report side effects that cause you distress in a very timely manner. We kind of switch the responsibility to the patient or the patient caregiver to make sure that the pill is taken as directed. So if you are taking oral therapies and have a side effect that you're uncertain of, we encourage that you call your office nurse or your physician and we can help guide you through the phone. So any emergency that develops, we want to know about it. Usually with our clinics, we have people on call 24-7. We'd rather know than not. They'll give you recommendations specific to your medication and your individual situation. If you miss a dose of your oral chemotherapy, we would advise you to call the office to get instructions. Usually it's not detrimental if you miss a dose of chemotherapy but we would not want you to double up and take an extra dose the following day. All medications have a specific way to be taken so that you will get the most benefit from the drug and not have any complications from drug interactions. Some of the things I think you need to think about before starting oral chemotherapy, I think the very first thing is knowing the drug by name. Um, both the generic and brand name is very helpful. But second, you should read all the labels that are on your bottle. A lot of that information pertains to storage. Should I store medication in a refrigerator? Should I take this medication with food? Or should I take it on an empty stomach? It will also talk to you about some of the other medications that you might be on that may interact with some of the chemotherapy that we give. It's very important that we keep uh, on schedule with these medications, whether they're once, twice, or three times a day. And so by keeping by that schedule, these drugs can be as effective as possible. In order for me to keep a really good routine of taking my medication, I always have my cell phone with me, so I set a reminder alarm on my cell phone. Before starting oral therapy, we would like to make sure that you understand, number one, how to take the drug, and number two, what to look out for when taking the medicines as far as side effects. 
Side effects in both IV and oral chemotherapy happen because the medicine is geared to look at rapidly dividing cells. Unfortunately, the medication cannot tell the difference between those rapidly dividing cells, whether they're cancerous or non-cancerous. So side effects of chemotherapy, whether oral or IV, are caused because some of the normal cells are being destroyed. When we talk about specific side effects, usually the bone marrow, which is the factory that makes those three important cells, your white cells, which help you prevent infections, your red cells, which carry oxygen, and your platelets that help you clot, are usually all affected with this. When red blood cells are low, you feel tired or fatigued. A few things to do that may help is to balance periods of rest with activity. Keep well hydrated, eat a balanced diet, or try to participate in moderate exercise for 30 minutes, three to five days per week. Lowering of the white blood cells may put you at higher risk for infection since white blood cells are your immune fighting cells. And you would need to make sure that you use good infection precautions, such as good hand washing, staying away from people who are actively ill, if you develop a fever while on therapy of 100.4 degrees or higher, we ask that you call your physician's office or go to the nearest emergency room. If your platelet count is low, you will have the tendency to bruise or bleed more easily. Take good care not to cut yourself and avoid any injury to yourself. Wear hard-soled shoes or slippers. Use hand railings and avoid slippery, wet surfaces. GI side effects or gastrointestinal side effects happen and they can range from diarrhea or constipation. They can be changes in the way you taste your food or your appetite. All chemotherapy usually does cause some nausea, so making sure they do have some nausea medicines are very important. A unique rash is a side effect that can be related to oral therapy. Your doctor or nurse will let you know if this could be an expected side effect. We really encourage all patients to call as soon as they suffer a side effect so we can manage it in the most appropriate fashion. Some oral cancer therapies can have an effect on fertility or your ability to have children in the future. If this is a concern for you, discuss this with your doctor or nurse. If there is any possibility that you could be pregnant, let your doctor or nurse know immediately. Do not get pregnant or get a woman pregnant while you are on oral cancer therapy. Discuss with your doctor or nurse what methods of birth control might be safe in your situation. Oral cancer therapies, like most other medicines, will have specific instructions noted on the bottles regarding the storage and handling. It is important that you read these instructions and follow them carefully. We ask you that you don't remove it from the original container that you receive it from the pharmacy in to keep it separated from your other medications. Don't keep it around children or pets. If it needs refrigerated, put it in the refrigerator. If refrigeration is needed, make a special area away from food items. Store the medication in a sealed plastic container or bag. Definitely don't set your medication on a windowsill where it's in the sunlight. Not anywhere where it's moist either. A lot of people keep their medications in a bathroom medicine cabinet and it's really not the best place to keep it. Taking your medication at home will be very important for you. You'll have to set up a little special area dedicated to getting your pill ready to take. Never crush or break your oral chemotherapy. If you have trouble swallowing pills, please let your doctor or nurse know. The medication may be available in a form that is easier to swallow. And when you get ready to prepare your pill, making sure you wash your hands before and afterwards. We advise patients to put a paper towel down on the counter so the pill isn't directly touching the counter and to use that as their workspace as they're preparing to take their medication. We ask that your caregiver wear rubber gloves or latex gloves that you can just buy at the drugstore and also to follow good hand washing techniques for before and afterwards. If you use rubber gloves, 
Wash the outside with soapy water before removing them. Avoid vinyl gloves. If you use disposable gloves, remove them carefully, turning them inside out, then seal them in a plastic bag and throw into trash. If possible, do not handle chemotherapy if you are pregnant or breastfeeding. Traveling with chemotherapy is usually not a problem. However, you may have to make special arrangements if the chemotherapy needs special storage, like refrigeration. Regardless of how you travel, you should always seal your chemotherapy medicine in a plastic bag. Talk with your nurse, doctor, or pharmacist for more instructions. It takes about 48 hours for your body to break down and or get rid of most chemotherapy drugs. During this time, a small amount of chemotherapy comes out in your urine, stool, and vomit. There are many things you can do to keep your home safe from exposure to chemotherapy during and after treatment. If you are using a bedpan for body wastes or a container for vomiting, be careful not to splash or spill the contents while you are emptying them into the toilet. If the bedpan or container used for vomit is not disposable, rinse it with dishwashing or laundry detergent and water and put the rinse water in the toilet. Flush the toilet with the lid down. Any sink or basin that is used for vomiting should be rinsed with dishwashing or laundry detergent and rinsed with water. Wash clothing or bed linens that have body wastes on them with laundry detergent and hot water separately from the other laundry as soon as possible. If you are unable to wash them immediately, place them in a sealed plastic bag until they can be washed. A few chemo drugs can be present in small amounts in semen and vaginal fluids. You or your partner may want to use condoms while you are getting chemotherapy and for about two weeks afterward. Talk to your healthcare provider about your concerns. If you are caring for someone receiving chemotherapy, always wear rubber or disposable waterproof gloves when you are cleaning or handling containers that are used for body waste. Always wash your hands with soap and water after you take the gloves off. If you get body waste or chemotherapy on your skin, wash the area with soap and water. Watch the skin for the next seven days. If there is any redness or irritation, contact your doctor. If your eyes are splashed by body waste or chemotherapy, wash the eye with water or eye wash, artificial tears, for 15 minutes. Contact your doctor immediately for further instructions. Contact the Poison Control Center in your area for any other concerns. When the time comes and you no longer need to continue taking oral therapy or your medication treatment will change, any leftover or unused medication will need to be disposed of properly. Ask your doctor, nurse, or pharmacist for advice about the best way to safely dispose of any unused medications. One of the methods many patients use to help keep them on track is by journaling. By that we mean they have a notebook and they just keep track of their days and the times that they take their medications and any side effects that they may have with their medications. You taking a note of your daily kind of routine, the daily kind of side effects, that puts things into perspective for the physician to know really what the patients are experiencing. By keeping an accurate record of your treatment, you can decrease the chance of taking too many doses or missing doses. There are many resources available to assist you with your treatment experience. Your doctor or nurse will be able to identify these additional resources at your facility. For additional information about specific side effects or oral cancer therapy drugs, visit the website chemocare.com. This video has been generously sponsored by the Scott Hamilton CARES Initiative at Cleveland Clinic Taussig Cancer Institute. For more information about CARES, visit www.scottcares.org.